Yeah, I can say that I am, per- I mean, uh, by nature, a, a social person. I really like to be with people, stand with people, meet new people, learn from different perspectives. But you don't uh, naturally need to be uh, a, a networking or a social person. I think that you can learn it. And 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 as in everything, practice makes things better. So I think the earlier you start in your career to network, the better it is because then you have to be uh, proactive rather than uh, reactive. Thank you for tuning in to Rise to Leadership podcast, a weekly show that explores topics that matter while sharing stories of inspiring leaders who are creating positive change. I am so excited today to lead this conversation with Eileen Booming. Eileen Booming works as Director of Marketing at Manpower Group. At the same time, she is the Netherlands chapter lead of Turkish Wing. Eileen's career started as industrial engineer and has evolved into marketing where her passion lies. Her 17 year career began in Turkey and she stepped into global career with UPS where she worked more than 10 years and held several positions, including country marketing manager for Italy and West Europe marketing manager based in the Netherlands. Being an ambassador of women's empowerment and diversity and inclusion, Eileen is involved in various projects to make a difference in this field. Eileen and I had a conversation last year before the pandemic struck. We had a general discussion on leadership and inspiring women to lead. We covered a range of topics from leadership styles to leadership skills and behavior and mindsets. In particular, we talked about networking and strategic connections. Today, I would like us to deepen our discussion on networking and strategic connections. Before I dive into the questions for today, I'll speak briefly about why we chose this topic. One of the things we value most at Rise and Lead is bringing people together through various events, through our summits, through what we call Connect to Grow. And for those who may be listening to me or watching for the very first time, uh, who do not know what Rise and Lead is all about, our Rise and Lead Summit is an annual gathering for leaders and aspiring leaders who come together to connect, network, share ideas and knowledge and best practices on gender leadership and diversity and inclusion. For the last three years, we've held this summit every year in September, and this year is coming up again September 22nd, to September the 24th. And it's going to be taking place online so you can join us from every location, anywhere you are, you can join us this year. Just go to riseandleadsummit.com to secure your seat. Uh, apart from the Rise and Lead Summit, we also organize bi-monthly mentoring circles, creating connections between aspiring leaders and role models and mentors, and also deepening our knowledge on various leadership topics. So Eileen, welcome uh, again. Hello, everybody. <laughs> good afternoon. Yeah, it's, very, it's good to have you. And uh, I'd like to start by asking, what does networking mean to you? And also strategic connections. And yeah. you know, what does it mean to you? And is it important? when it comes to our leadership growth. Yeah, so good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon, uh, everyone. It's it's a pleasure for me to be here and back to uh, Rise and Lead uh, Leadership uh, Series. Um, Yeah, definitely uh, networking and uh, strategic connections are very important and essential uh, in in career. Uh, Typically, when we start our career journey, 
Uh, we are very focused on, on performance, on driving results, streamlining processes, and, and really focus on our performance and stay in our cubicle. And, but this is not what is not gonna bring you uh, advancement in your career. So this is a prerequisite, this is a baseline. So you have to perform, you have to deliver the results. But in case you wanna grow in your career, you are gonna make it with the connections and the strategic network that you are gonna create. And there actually, I'm gonna use an, an analogy. Uh, think yourself like a brand or a product. So you might have the best features and the best functionality as a product, but in case you don't have any customers or in case you don't have any investors that will invest in your, in your services or the product that you provide, then it doesn't have any value. So it is also similar to you. You need to work on creating your brand and also gain followers and also sponsors and leaders that will help you through the way, inspire you, show the path, and sometimes give you critical feedbacks. Because with these connections, you are also gonna grow and you will also get very important feedback about this brand that you develop inside your organization, but not only also outside of organization. Wow. Thanks for sharing that. And I'm hearing so many things, you know, from what you just said. Uh, you're talking about mentorships, uh, sponsorships. You're talking yeah. about personal brand, which Definitely. means, does it mean that networking is connected to a whole lot of other skills that we need to grow in, uh, in our career? Definitely. Definitely. So I think that within the networking umbrella you can put different uh, elements i think it all starts with building the connection and the connection also throughout the, the the days or the weeks or the months can evolve to different platforms so a, a person that is in your network you can start meeting them nurturing uh, the, the the relation but at the end you can see that this person can become your mentor and a person that you can go to, get advices, guidance, and, and support whenever uh, you need. But also afterwards, this person can also become a good sponsor of yours. In different meetings, in a meetings that you are not present, this person also can be an ambassador of your brand and help you uh, get where you wanna get. So that's why it all starts with the networking and the building relation, but then it can go towards a different uh, direction throughout the time. Yeah, uh, I was, you know, recently I was having a conversation with a friend and she said something, you know, very profound. She said that sometimes, you know, we keep saying we want more women in leadership positions and, you know, women are intelligent, they are smart, they are collaborative, you know, they have the skills to get to where they're supposed to be, but yet we have very few women in top leadership. Uh, you know, this friend was saying something like, you know, the, the difference, like the difference between getting promoted and staying out of being promoted is your ability to network and build connections with people. And I could also relate it to business owners. Like, you know, you have great products, you have everything you need to sell yourself or your brand or your product. And, but nobody knows about it. You know, mm -hmm. nobody knows about it. And then you're not able to attract the right customers to your business or get promoted, you know, at work to advance in your career. So can you tell us how has networking helped you in your yeah. own personal journey? Uh, at yeah. work yeah sure i think that it helped me in, in in different ways so when i had a business challenge or i had to take any critical or important decision then i went back to my network and to my connection because you need diversity of thoughts when you have a challenge ahead or you need to take a critical decisions uh, so that's why in case if you have a network from diverse perspective, then you will hear people approaching the challenge from different angles that will make you reflect, think about, and, and finally make the best decision of your, for yourself. At the end of the day, you will resolve the challenge or you will make the decision, but having all these different thoughts 
will help you shape the, the decision journey at the best way. And you will have different perspective that will help you throughout the way. And I think that this is, this is very important because those people from different background, from different perspective, different organization, different experiences can ask you a question that might trigger a, a, a light on, on you that will be maybe very important for, for a decision that, uh, that you want to make or, or a problem that, that you want to solve. So that's why I can say that it helped me a lot uh, throughout the journey on these critical uh, uh, moments, especially. Oh, that's very good. Again, thanks for sharing that. And, um, you know, personally, I, I wasn't very good at networking. <laughs> <laughs> Not at all, but I'm very good when it comes to strategic connections, you know, building relationships. Uh, and one time, somehow I had to learn how to network and I kept doing it. But each time I go out for all these networking meetings, it drains my energy a lot. So I did a lot, some kind of personality test. And the results showed that networking did not come naturally uh, to me that I had to learn it. I mean, I was surprised, like, how did they know? <laughs> so tell me, uh, do you have to be a natural networker to be able to network at work? What, what steps did you take? Um, mm -hmm. You know, what, what have you done to help you to be, become a good networker? Yeah. Yeah, I can say that I am, I mean, by nature, a social person. I really like to be with people, stand with people, meet new people, learn from different perspectives. But you don't uh, naturally need to be uh, a networking or a social person. I think that you can learn it. And, and, and as in everything, practice makes things better. So I think the earlier you start in your career to network, the better it is, because then you have to be uh, proactive rather than uh, reactive. Actually, I'm going to uh, read a quote from uh, Dale Carnegie about the networking. And it states that uh, you can make more friends in two months by becoming interesting in other people than you can in two years by trying to get other people interested in you. Uh, I, I really like this, uh, this statement, because if yeah. you just sit again, coming back to my first statement in your cubicle and wait uh, for network to be expanded, it's never going to happen. You just have to be courageous enough to go out proactive and, and build those, uh, those, those connections. And, and I think that it just starts with small steps. Just define who do you want to meet. And when you know who you want to meet, then you need to define, okay, what are the, the common things that you have with this person? And really be prepared because if I want to come in an event and meet a very I need to know what is important for Eberi, what, is, what are her experiences and what we have in common. And then you have the playground to start a conversation. And then obviously you also have to nurture and, and keep this, uh, this, this conversation going on so that whenever you need, then I can go back to Eberi and ask her for, for support hopefully. Um, so this is the way I, I, I see uh, networking evolving. But definitely, I think that this can be something that can be uh, learned. Maybe not easy, but everything uh, starts at the end of your uh, comfort zone. Everything is learnable. And talking about that, you know, uh, during the Inspiring Women Leaders TV show that I hosted in March, I remember one of the uh, guests, Marian, she said something about uh, nurturing relationships. She said, we've come to a, a situation where people think that they can just go to people, ask for what they want. If they don't get it, they cut off the relationships, but that it yeah. doesn't work that way. Sometimes it can yeah. take a few months, even years, and before you can really get something meaningful from those relationships. So uh, what do you have to say about that? And what are some steps that our audience, people listening to us, mm -hmm can take to start learning how to build relationships that become valuable, if not yeah. now, in the future. Yeah. 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 And on that one, I would say that it goes both sides. Always think about what you can give to, to the other people, what, who is in front of you, because I think that we all have something to give to others. And you can learn a lot for, from a, a contact that you build in your network. 
but also think about what you can give the person in front of you and also create some some touch points throughout the way so keep the relation i mean you meet a person in an event have some follow-up calls follow-up connections some emails so nurture the relation and, and keep the relation or, or maybe if there is something a material an event or, or anything that can be maybe uh, suitable for that person share uh, and, and then keep keep the relation and then then if one day you need that person for a particular topic then you can easily go and ask for for support so i see networking always on on both ways so take but also give always also think about this uh, this balance in, in in networking i think it's very important and and also as you said you cannot meet a person and next day say, okay, can you help me on this? You need to leave the time to the, the, for the relation to develop, to evolve, to progress and come to that point that this person can be part of your support network. That's correct. And, you know, like I always say uh, that leadership, and it's not me saying it, I think, um, I think it's uh, John Maxwell, you know, she, he said that leadership is influence. And how do you get to influence people? The easiest way to influence people is when they trust you. When people yeah. trust you, they will go the extra yeah. mile for you, right? Yeah, and how do you build trust without relationships? So that's the way I look at it. You know, who do I want to network with? Do I, am I able to trust this person? Can this person trust me? Because when people trust you, so for example, people are busy executives and I know that you're busy. So if you're not answering me, it's not because you don't want to answer, it's because you are busy. So it's actually from trust that you, know, you can develop such relationships, just like you said, and giving people without also expecting something in return is, you know, I call it, um, that's what I call generosity. You know, yeah. sometimes people give and they want you to get from you immediately. Um, mm -hmm. And that's why people don't trust people, even when they are giving to them. Yeah. So it's very important. But now let's bring it back to our new reality, which mm -hmm. is remote working. <laughs> so because in the past, networking is about face to face connections. You know, that's the best mm -hmm. way to network, even though there are social networks. Uh, so, and now everybody is forced to work from home. Yeah. How do you advise people to continue uh, deepening their relationships or even finding and building new relationships in this season? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I still think that it is, there are lots of uh, possibilities, Eberi. Uh, Obviously, pandemic changed the way uh, we live, we do business, and, and it's also this, all this period requires a lot of uh, professional and, and personal uh, resilience. And, uh, uh, and I think that we will all go out of it uh, a lot more strong uh, than, than we used to be uh, before pandemic. Uh, coming back to the uh, networking topic, so I think that there are still lots of uh, events happening now, obviously, on a, on a virtual basis. There are lots of webinars, networking events, some, some summits that are supposed to be done uh, in, in person. Now they are done in, uh, in virtual environments. So I would recommend uh, everybody to, to think about the, the best options for them and go join to these events. But also there, continue again to be strategic as they will be in a, in a normal event. Because in a, maybe let's think about a face-to-face -face event. Uh, let's think about Rise and Lead Summit. So I'm going to go, I got the ticket, I'm going to join the event. What I would do, I would look to the a list of participants, I would look to the speakers, I would define who I would like to meet from that event. And also do all this preparation that we just talked about, things about what are the common points, how I can build the connection with the particular person that I want to meet. So we can still do all these things also on a virtual basis. And, and maybe it's not as natural as meeting like face to face, but you can always use the chat functionality uh, in, in the different tools but also try to connect it to some people via LinkedIn after the event saying that you listen to this person or you join to this event together and, and maybe it's, uh, try to start the conversation in that manner. And, and nowadays, actually, everybody's also looking for some, some connections. I think that this is also the best time uh, to do it because 
everybody also wants to have a different social interaction as well. So I think that this is also the right timing is, is good to do that. And moreover, I think it's also a good period to develop global network. Mm. Because before, normally you would go on an event happening in your city or, or in your country. Yeah, maybe you were traveling to some conferences, maybe in, in different countries. Um, but if you think about the majority of the uh, activities you join, they are more local events. But nowadays you, you have the opportunity to join like global events and network with the global possibilities. So, so that's why I also see this uh, quite exciting because you can join an event that is based in the US, meet some contacts and then peer from, from US, Asia, Europe. So also I think that we saw this happening in the Rise and Lead Summit uh, that happened uh, a month ago. So we had speakers coming from different geos and and it seemed quite natural and then our also network broadened as a, as a consequence. So I would flip it back and, and say that pandemic is, is, is not a barrier on the other side, I think brings more opportunities for, for networking. Well, that's so that's a powerful statement, but the pandemic is not a barrier. So there are, nobody should give any excuse, right? Yeah, and yeah. you said something also, you said about uh, um, you know, social using different types of social uh, uh, networks like LinkedIn. Somehow, I believe that so many people sometimes are interested in knowing people, but mm -hmm. they are not leveraging those connections. Yeah, I don't know if you understand. And I used to be like that. You know, like I'll go maybe several years ago, uh, four or five years ago. I used to travel a lot to different mm -hmm. conferences. And I used to meet a lot of heads of states and stuff. So a friend of mine would say, you meet a lot of people, but you're not leveraging those connections. And I'm like, what are you talking about? I, you know, I'm, I'm not looking for anything. But I started, so when I started learning about networking, I realized that it's not just about networking per mm -hmm. se. It's about strategic connections. It's about, yeah. just like you said, you know, taking some time to research who is coming to an event and what do you do after the event is what matters. How do you follow up? So I want to bring you back to that point, mm -hmm. especially with so many people who are more interested in having LinkedIn connections. I get a lot of connection requests, but then nothing. How do you advise those who are watching us or listening to start leveraging those contacts, those connections, whether yeah. is uh, those connections on LinkedIn or on a virtual event. So what, what steps do you advise people to take to leverage yeah. those connections? So I think it all starts by uh, knowing yourself because I think that you need to know yourself and your needs. And, and we all have development uh, uh, areas. and. And you need to be really fully aware of these and also select your connections accordingly. Because in case you wanna leverage your, your network and, 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 and get the most out of it, then these people that you select should, should give you something and should support you on, on the areas that, that you have the, the need. And also I, I would again create an analogy here again to the organization because all the organization have their uh, um, board. So also think about your network as your advisory board. And in case you need to, uh, you go through a challenging journey, or again, you have a business challenge, or you need to take um, a challenging decision, then go back to this network, to this advisory board of yours that can, that can support you uh, to, to, to make the right, right decision. But again, you have to be critical on, on creating those connections. You need to define how many of your contacts can play this role. And, and again, you need to maintain all these relations throughout the way to, to come to this point of advisory board board concept. Because I think that this is really, um, at, if you think about like a pyramid, so these people, maybe you have, let's say, uh, hundreds of people in your network, and then you just meet them and then you don't maybe connect that much to them. Then maybe with, Half of them, you maybe time to time see in events, still stay in touch in LinkedIn or via mail or, or otherwise. But then 
maybe 10 percent of this network should be your kind of uh, advisory uh, team that will support you throughout the way and those should be the people that you should keep the contact on a, on a frequent uh, uh, basis and again leverage those connections whenever uh, you need Thank you. And um, before I ask the next questions, I see that some people are watching us. Or uh, I see uh, also David. David, hi, and Henriette. Um, there are more people, but I don't know who. There's one more person. Uh, so um, for those watching us, please feel free to type in your questions or suggestions, especially in terms of some the kind of challenges you have when it comes to uh, networking, or uh, maybe some of the opportunities you have, you know, you, you've had because you were able to network. So for me, uh, when I started networking seriously, I became very strategic. Um, you know, I go to so many events, but at one point I realized that some of those network meetings were not serving me. And this is where we see a lot of women when it comes to let's start networking, we start going to different places and we know and feel, we know it's not serving us, but we just want to go there because we feel, you know, we have we've made some friends there. So for those listening to us who are asking, how do I identify the right network to, mm -hmm. you know, for me to grow in my career or business or to achieve my aspirations and goals. What would you say about that? Yeah, I think that definitely you can start maybe less targeted in, in the early phases of your career just to, uh, to get used to it and, and, and get practice. But after a certain point, as you said, you need to be more targeted about who you need in, in your network. Because again, as you said, we are all very busy and, and keeping those relations also require time, energy and, and effort. So you need to definitely uh, define the, the right number for you and also balance the effort with the other priorities that, that you have. And, and moreover, I would also say that it's important to balance uh, internal versus external. Um, because typically people have the tendency also to, to network with people uh, among their organization and maybe even within the first circle, like the same team or, or like the, 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 the next team sitting uh, in, in, next, uh, in the office. But you should go beyond that. You should try to diversify also your network within your company, try to network with people from different departments, from different seniority, from different levels. And then again, you will also start to have this diversity of, of thoughts, but you shouldn't be also satisfied only with internal connections. You should also leverage and make time for, for external connections as well. And also there, try to create as much as diversity as, as possible. Uh, I think the, the, the good um, channels to, to, to go could be the industry associations or our functional networks. It can be a network around marketing or it can be a network around uh, HR uh, community or also go uh, towards a direction that, uh, that you are passionate about. Like in my case, as you know, uh, uh, diversity and inclusion is, 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 is very dear to me. So this is an area that I try to invest my time so also it's, it's a way to, to connect to people that believe in the same cause and to connect to, to, to each other. So really it's start of exploring also different opportunities and, and defining the right balance uh, for you. Uh, but what I would recommend, it's important to be targeted and as diverse as, as, as possible. Because we also know that there are lots of uh, uh, researches uh, around uh, the importance of DNI for the company results and achieving the objectives. I think that it is also valid uh, at, at this networking level. So in case you want to have the most out of your network, it also goes together with the uh, diversity, uh, bringing diversity to your network, but also having the voice from, from different members whenever you need them and whenever you are gonna make a, a decision. I think again, the same analogy goes also here as well. Yeah, uh, if I may add to that, you know, I mean, you covered it all, but if we start, and you said it as well, but it's, if we start with having a goal, like why 
do I need to network? Why do yeah. I need to be there? You know, am I going there because so many people I know are there or am I going there because it aligns with my own personal goals in life? Yeah. So yeah. uh, that's very an important thing to keep in mind for those who are watching. And you also said something about having a balance between external and internal networking. And so I'm sure so many people watching us are women. So I want us to get a little bit real here as women with children, okay? Uh, uh, you know, it can really be, uh, I have five children. <laughs> so it's not really easy to expect me to be attending to many things. I do my best, you know, at work and I choose one or two things. I still have to come home and cook every day. You know, I still have to take care of the kids. I still have to do school runs, too many things. So for such women who are also listening to us, who are like, okay, I can't even, I don't even have time for myself. I don't have time because I'm taking care of my family. So for me, I go to work and I come back home. I'm not interested in networking. What, you know, how do you do it, please, Erlen? So. Yeah. Yeah. So I think it's again goes about planning, I mean, and having it in your agenda in case you don't plan it, you don't, so you can make it happen. So as a, uh, as a tool, what I would recommend uh, to have in your agenda, at least like 15 minutes to half an hour per week to connect to, to maybe people in your network or to meet new, new people. Um, so in case obviously you're in a, a, a normal office environment, you can uh, meet maybe a person from a different department, from a different uh, uh, function, and, and you can make it happen uh, that way. But on a virtual basis, also try to schedule those uh, quick chat or quick conversation meetings just to, to know uh, your, your contacts better or just to, to keep the, uh, the connection. So I would say that planning is, is, is the best, uh, best tool. But also if you are a person that travels a lot um, and for business, obviously in those days we are all uh, sitting in, in, in home and we can't travel, but hopefully in, in a certain time frame we will start maybe occasionally travel again. Also each time you go to a new location and make all this time for, for networking and, and, build, and building new contacts. Maybe you go to a new uh, uh, office or to a region office or to another country for a specific meeting but always try to go beyond that and try to be also meet other people that then you are supposed to meet and I think that this is also a good uh, good way to, to to expand your uh, your your network or if you are traveling again and then you are going to stay there for maybe longer than a couple of days try to also go to a female network event like there are also all these different uh, uh, networking groups like rise and lead uh, that that are present in different countries try to find them and see if there's a person that you can connect from that network and and then start and and, and build a, a connection afterwards i think it all goes with strategic planning and, and and making the time and and i think that we can all make 15 minutes uh, in our in our agendas if you don't plan it it seems not feasible, yeah. not doable, yeah. but then when you plan it, then, and well, then you see that actually it is, it is possible. And I think that this is the same uh, uh, for, for everything. It's also the same approach for exercising or, 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 or you know, hobbies, et cetera. I mean, if you make time in your agenda, yeah. you make it happen. If you don't, then just, you, you have another meeting instead. Yeah, it's, it's about, you know, when you, talk about uh, work-life balance and we said there is none. We don't have work-life balance. It's all about uh, your priorities, what you uh, put on your agenda is what you have to do. You know, you have to think about your family, you have to think about uh, some of your responsibilities and make out time to take care of everything. So that's why women, we are super women. And um, yeah, thanks for sharing. Uh, so I have a question here from Doville. Uh, Doville is saying, as Eileen mentioned, we meet many connections online these days, rather than face to face to at, uh, uh, to at the big, okay, rather than face to face like in the past, or I'm using my phone to read, what are the best strategies 
that worked for you, Eileen or Iberi, on nurturing relationships that start online? Do you go about it the same as you as you would with person who you who you meet face to face? or it needs some different steps. So what she's saying is, um, you know, you understand what she's saying. Yeah. Like, how do we go about nurturing some of these new yeah. connections? Yeah. So I mean, I can start- give uh, maybe an example that happened to me. Uh, I think it was like uh, early April. So just uh, in the first couple of weeks of the, of the pandemic and we were all trying to, to understand what is going on and how we are gonna uh, survive with it. And in that, uh, uh, in those days, I joined uh, an event about um, uh, building resilience, and it was also one of the hot topics for webinars in these days. And then when I joined this uh, this webinar, then I think we were like uh, seven, eight people, and it was a quite uh, open platform in which people expressed their frustration. We shared each other. And actually with uh, the, uh, the facilitator afterwards, I, I, I built a connection because she was also very passionate about uh, DNI and we decided actually and have a follow up uh, conversation. And afterwards we realized that both of us, we were looking to put an article actually about DNI and the uh, effects of, of the pandemic to this topic. And then we started to work together and actually we, we made a LinkedIn article uh, about it and it was like really a brainstorm and then we contributed equally to it and then it was a good way uh, to, 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 to start a connection but a build a connection and nurture it and, and this all happened uh, virtually I, I didn't have a chance to meet that that person because she is based in Italy and I am in the Netherlands uh, but hopefully one day we will also have the chance to, to meet in, uh, in, in person but we still wow. stay in touch um, so I think that this is a concrete example of how this can, this can happen. Wow. That's so, you know, that's so inspiring. You know, you met somebody virtually and you already collaborated with the person. You've never met the person. It, I think, um, that for me, um, in terms of the people I meet, uh, online, I meet a lot of people. Mm-hmm. And so, uh, to answer the view, it's, if, if maybe people have something that I, I think I need to connect with them, like I don't, when it comes to business, I don't beat about the bush. I just go straight, mm-hmm. you know, I reach out to the people and I tell them why I'm reaching mm-hmm. out to them. Uh, because when you talk about networking, you also have to think about women having the confidence to ask for what they want directly. So they may say yes or no, but of course I did ask. In some cases, I follow people. I just want to also learn from them. And um, the way I nurture the relationship is, you know, reaching out to them also maybe via private message to say Mm -hmm. I appreciate what they are doing or something. And Mm -hmm. the more you uh, connect with them also on their posts, the more they will remember you and recognize you. But it's also not enough to just like people's posts or anything. It's important to maybe always write your point of view. So the person starts making a connection yeah. with you and see, oh, this person, you know, we might have something in common. Maybe yeah. we we'll share something in common. So when you now reach out to them, they remember you. But yeah. if people feel there's really nothing in common you have, even when you reach out to them, they might not respond favorably. And this can be, uh, you know, this uh, to support what I've just said, somebody also sent uh, a message, Chioma. Hi, Chioma. (laughs) He said, uh, when you know who you've been called to serve, that could help niche down where you network. That is, that is, there's wisdom in what she just said. You know, when you know where or who you're supposed to uh, collaborate with or do business with or kind of serve, like even with your message, then you know that this is, I'm just going to network here. Some people spread themselves so thin. They just want to be everywhere in the name of visibility. But the thing is, let me bring it back to leadership development, okay? So you you can easily grow your leadership when you understand who you are. That's the first step. And when you understand who you are, your strengths, you know, 
uh, and your values. It helps you to understand who you've been called to serve, just like Choma said. It helps you to know where you should focus your attention on. But sometimes, most people don't even know who they are. They don't know who they are speaking to. They just hear the word visibility and they just want to get visible everywhere, hoping to catch somebody. But for me, that has not worked for me and that's not how I practice networking and strategic connections. Mm -hmm. So what do you, uh, Eileen, what do you think? Yeah, so I think that it, it again goes back to, I think, a personal brand. And, and, and it, I think, all starts about building your brand and, and understanding the, the needs of your, of your brand and, and define a, a, a marketing strategy around it. And I think networking is only uh, one pillar of it. And, and it all starts off all the different uh, things and the different pillars that, that you consider. And you should start by having all this uh, awareness around yourself, around your brand, understanding the needs, and then, then think about networking and not to do the other way around because you can say, okay, I need to, to network, I need to meet new people. But then if you do that way before doing the groundwork, then you cannot be targeted or strategic enough to build the connection that will help you uh, throughout the way. So it all starts by uh, knowing yourself, understanding yourself, knowing where you want to go and, and building the path towards it. Networking obviously will be an important uh, element, uh, but uh, it's not uh, enough uh, just when used only, only this tool. So you have to combine it with, with different, different things. And, and also one thing that I want to add to what you said, uh, also think about your, your, your network also door for other people that you can meet, because mm. this is also a strong way to meet some people that you want to meet. Just to give an example, now I, I know you, we, we know each other for quite some years. And in case there's a person that I want to meet and I know that, okay, very knows this person. This, so this can be also a good way to, to, to reach to this connection. Yeah. I can kindly ask you if it is possible for you to introduce me to this person because I want to talk to him or her about this specific topic. And it's also important to define why you want to meet. If you want to meet a person to a connection, you also need to be targeted and specific there and then define why you need and then convince your, your contact uh, to be a bridge for you to reach this, um, this connection. Yeah, you know, all of these things are leading to the last question I wanted to ask you today, which was, uh, you know, like, how do you choose who to connect with? So for example, so many people want to connect with you as well. So it's not just about you reaching out to people. Some people also want to connect with you. And for some people, you don't feel that uh, uh, um, spirit connection, you know, mm -hmm. internally with them and you want to run away. <laughs> I'm serious. Mm -hmm. And for others, you know, you just kind of, you're drawn to them. Mm -hmm. How do you choose, you know, like, on uh, let's use leadership skills how do you choose who you want to connect with especially when people reach out to you mm -hmm. i think their um openness and authenticity i think uh, plays an important role um because yeah obviously we are all on linkedin and then we receive many messages so also think about if you reach a person via linkedin what is the message that will make you stand out from the crowd and and make uh, this person that you want to uh, meet or, or connect, uh, just stop and, and read it. Just think again strategic about what you are writing, because if you like write like 10 paragraphs of a longer message, maybe this person doesn't have the time to read it. So just think about your, your pitch and what you want to tell and, and try to, to also appeal again to the, to the needs or to the interest areas of the person that you want to meet. So find a common ground and, and phrase it in a pitch way so that the person can relate to it. And, and don't sound it like marketing or sales related or anything else. Just be genuine, be authentic and try to stand out. I think those would be my, my recommendations. And also be kind as well. And, and don't be rude in case the person doesn't uh, reply to you, might be different reasons to it, or just think about the, the tone of the message that you sent. Always, I think, being also self-critic here helps. 
Yeah, that's, uh, you know, if I may add to that, um, somehow I think some, there are some people you're just drawn to and so, some people that maybe they, it has to do with energy or something like your some people just take all the energy they suck it away from you next time you're running away from them uh i don't know how it works so don't quote me on that mm-hmm. but i think uh for those who are watching us it's important that we focus on also strategically connecting with the right people and also make sure that you nurture those relationships find out what what kind of value can you add to the next person 